Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to give an update on the industry setup um, and answer some questions people have been uh, sending me. So let's get into it. Uh, I'll start with the container hubs. A lot of people have been asking how container hubs work and how to set them up. So we will do that real quick. We'll grab some containers. Let's grab, we'll just do three. Grab our container hub and we'll stick it right here. So you just link to the container hub and you can link a maximum of 10 containers. There's the hub um, still has the same link limits as every other industry and that's 10 links in, 10 links out. So you can have 10 containers into here and what that does is it makes all of these one single container, all right? And this is now the container, the hub. And what that means is if you're on a dynamic construct, um, like my ship over there, the location of your hub is where all of the weight is at because this is the container, right? Even though if you click on this, you can see all the items in this container, it's, it's actually in, inside the hub, right? So, also note that because these are all one single container, you can no longer link to these containers or from them, right? Everything has to go through the container hub. So these are one container, and that one container has the, t the 10 links out to other industry. Okay, so it's important to note that these 10 links in to the container hub from, from containers do not take up the input links from industry or transfer units, right? So I can link 10 containers, and then I still have 10 in links from industry. So, if, and you can see that, so if I select from an industry, and I right click, select an in plug to link to, you can see my industry in links here. I have zero through nine, so that's 10 links, right? So if I link this, and then I grab another one and do the same thing. Right click, select an in link. You see link zero went away because that link I just made is taking up link zero. So now I only have nine left, one through, through nine. If I link this one, that's gonna take link one. So if I do it again, now I only have two through nine, right? So industry links take up the 10 input industry from here. The containers do not. So those are the 10 in links. Now if I right click on this and I say select an out link, you'll see I have one through 10 for industry. So I have 10 output links to go from this to an industry unit. So I hope that explains container hubs and, and how they work and how to use them. Okay, so let's go into the updates for the industry. Um, because of the server issues, you know, a lot of you are aware of, I haven't really done anything with the voxels yet. I'll, I'll get into designing a decent looking building um, eventually, maybe within another week. Um, but currently I've just been building up the industry this is a personal industry, so there are, um, some of you have probably seen much larger industries. There's plenty of huge industries out there from organizations. Um, and I will show a build of one of those, but this is just a personal one I've been working on. Kind of to show you guys how, how it works. So here's what the links look like. So a few more links than last time. It's actually still not very complicated, even though maybe it looks like it. Um, it is actually pretty straightforward. Some of the changes, I've expanded the refineries, so I have a lot more of those. So it still comes from my ore into the refineries. The refiner, refineries send it into these containers here. So this is where the pier is at. The pier then goes into the smelters to be turned into metal. And then that goes out into the rest of the factory. The transfer units, um, as I've shown before, if I have multiple units, 
So Duralumin. I have many of these crafting Duralumin. So I take the copper and the aluminum from the pure containers. I transfer it over here. And then these containers send it into the Duralumin refiners or smelters. Now how to calculate your throughput so you know how much of this do you need? That's some of the questions I've been getting. And that's pretty simple. I like to convert everything into the same time scale and I use per hour. So you see currently you can look at a recipe and it tells you how much it makes and how long it takes. So this is going to make, with my skills, 81.75 Duralumin every 11 minutes. That's 7.43 every minute, which is 445.9 every hour, right? Let's look at how much it consumes. We'll start with the copper. 91 every 11 minutes, right? Which is uh, 8.27 every minute which is 496.36 per hour. Okay, so it's consuming for the copper almost 500, we'll, we'll round up, so 500 per hour. So let's look at the transfer unit. Transfer unit can transfer 100 every 10 seconds. All right, so it can actually transfer um, 600 per minute, which is 36,000 per hour. Okay, so one transfer unit can transfer 36,000 per hour, and one machine consumes 500 per hour. So one transfer unit can handle 72 machines, right? And I only have uh, six right now. And so that's why this is efficient. Now, how can one transfer unit send items to 72 machines? Well, one can't do that um, by itself, but one, but I can chain these together so I'm still only using one link from the source, right? And I can do that seven times so I can make I, well, I can do that on limited times, but to get to 72, I have one link coming from the source into here. I would build up nine machines. And then the 10th link from the container would go to another transfer unit. So you can chain them together. And you can do that until you got 72 machines. Once you got beyond 72 machines, you would want to take another transfer unit from the source and start over because this one would start to bottleneck if you were running all of them at the same time, which, which would take an extremely large factory to do. So it's not really necessary at that point, but that is how you can calculate your throughput. So let's go up here and look at like an end product. Um, so we'll look at our airfoils here, um, ailerons. So compact aileron M consumes 25 every 32 minutes. So if you look at that, 25 divided by 32 multiplied by 60, so that's 46.8. So we'll, we'll just round that up. We'll say this consumes 50 hydraulics per hour, right? Come down to hydraulics. Hydraulics are um, one per minute, so 60 an hour. So one machine can easily handle that one machine. So I have 10 of them, right, at 60 per hour, so 600 an hour. So I can power many machines without bottlenecking, as you can see. So that's kind of how you plan your throughput and calculate. I like to, like I said, put everything into this into the same time scale otherwise it can, it can get confusing when you're looking at this makes you know three a minute and then when you're looking at 
Okay, let's go to the, like a long craft. When you're trying to calculate per minute, you take something like a core unit. All right, six hours. Well, well, you want to see how many of these components does this consume per hour, and then you can see if you wanted to have multiple of these machines crafting cores, you'll know how many machines you need to feed that. It's pretty simple, actually. So I hope that makes sense. Now, with this factory, I have everything, as you can see, coming down here, or nearly everything. I have it all consolidated, so all the assembly lines send everything down here so I can grab whatever I need at a time. So if I want those airfoils I just showed, they're all right here. All right, if I need, uh, you know, some space engines, everything's organized um, and consolidated, all right? So I can grab whatever I need and it'll just automatically refill it. So it kind of simplifies it. So this factory makes everything of, in all these categories. And I also have some things I haven't sent down here yet, just miscellaneous stuff. You know, windows, piloting chairs, lights, screens, a lot of other things that are kind of spread out through here. Eventually I'll have everything come down in one place. Um, if members want things from the factory, they can drop off ore and pick up the items here if they reach out to me. So that's what that's for. And yeah, that is pretty much it. So I hope this explanation answered some questions. Maybe it gave you some more questions you can ask about. If you do have any other questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments below, or you can join the Infinity Corporation Discord, which I'll also link below, and you can ask them there. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at uh, my ship here. This is still my starter ship. I haven't done much to it. What I'm gonna do soon is actually tear this thing apart and rebuild a new ship. And, and show how to handle lift calculations, thrust calculations, and determine how much weight you can carry. Um, I'm rebuilding it because this thing, as you can see, it's a single layer, piloting chair right up front here, and with the PVP that's been taking place recently, this would die in probably a single shot from a large cannon or a large railgun. And so I want to prevent that, so we're gonna rebuild this and have a little bit more defensible hauler. Okay, so stay tuned for that. That'll probably be within the next week. And again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys around.